Hi everyone, welcome back to Down Home Dietitian. I'm Becky, and this is our son's new puppy, Edor, and he joined our family about a week ago. He is part Maremma, but mostly Great Pyrenees, and he is gonna be joining us on our homestead. So today I'm placing my seed order and I thought I would just walk you through my process of choosing which seeds I'm gonna order each year. I always like to do it on a cold rainy day sometime in January when I'm just so ready to get back out in the garden and looking through seed catalogs and my seed collection and ordering my seeds just really helps me to kind of scratch that itch and just get me through until I can start planting my seeds. What I always have with me when I do my seed order is a cup of tea, cause you got a seed collection and all the seeds that I already have. A seed catalog from my favorite local seed company. I like to buy from a company that produces the seeds in my area in the Pacific Northwest because if they're producing seeds here, that means that they're growing these plants here in my area, in my climate, I'm gonna be much more likely to be successful with these seeds. The company I like to use is called Territorial. They have lots of good options. They have organic and biodynamic for those who are looking for that. Um, lots of good heirloom varieties and I've had really good luck with their seeds. And so if you're in the Pacific Northwest, this might be a great one. Uh, you can get a catalog by going to their website and ordering one. Uh, you can do all your seed shopping online without the catalog. I just am so visual and tactile that the actual catalog helps me a lot, but you can definitely just do it on their website. So then I get a piece of scratch paper and I make a list of everything that I would like to grow this year. And this particular year, it is exceptionally long. <laughs> because we just moved to our homestead. I have lots of space and I have lots of big dreams for this property. So <clears throat> I have separated mine into herbs, flowers and ornamentals, fruit and vegetables. And the vegetables, most of them are things I've been growing for many years. And I, for most of them, I have seeds already. So I'm not gonna have to order those. It's just gonna be any that I happen to run short on and wasn't able to save seeds from last year. Um, the fruit, flowers and ornamentals and herbs are all mostly things that I haven't been growing. So those are gonna be things that I either have to buy or procure in other ways. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So what I did was make a list of everything I hope to grow. And along the way, I'm also going through a lot of considerations about my space, my soil, the types of beds I'm growing in, etc. I have a really great video of considerations for beginner gardeners, which is great for anybody each year as you're planning a garden. So I'll put that link in the top of this video and then I'll also uh, put the link in the description below if you wanna go watch that video. Assuming you've already figured out your space and how much you're able to grow and all of that, I highly recommend you figure out your seed budget in advance. <laughs> Unless money is just no object, lucky, lucky you, gardener, because seed buying is very addicting and looking at all the varieties and all the cool flavors and colors and varieties of the things that you've never seen in the grocery store is definitely tempting. So it's helpful to know in advance what your budget is. After I've made my list, I'll go into my seed collection and I will look through to see what seeds I already have and how much I have of them. Do I have enough for however much I wanna grow this year? So if I do, I will go ahead and just put a single line through that one. I like to keep this list just for reference later in the year, so I just put a nice single line through it, but what that tells me is I don't need to order seeds for that particular thing because I have enough left over from last year. Because I've started saving seeds, uh, I've been able to eliminate quite a few from my order, which is great. And each year it gets a little bit cheaper and easier. Or rather than cheaper, each year I get to add more within my same budget. Maybe that's a more accurate depiction. With some of the things that I'm looking to plant this year, they're perennials, which means that they will come back year after year after year. And many of them are able to be propagated from other plants, which just means that you can take a cutting or a part 
of a plant that exists, you can plant it in your garden and it will establish and take root and multiply on its own. So in those cases, to help me establish as many plants as I can this year within my budget, I'm actually gonna see how many of these that are on my list I can find in someone's garden that I know. <laughs> so I have a friend who has a beautiful herb garden. So I already know that she has rosemary, she has thyme and sage, and I can propagate from her healthy, happy herb plants, and I don't have to buy them to plant them in my garden. So that's gonna be so helpful. My mom has a beautiful, luscious, happy rhubarb plant. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some rhubarb from her plant, with permission, of course. I asked these people, okay? You'll also find if you have gardeners in your neighborhood, they're often really eager to share. If you saw my October homestead update, you saw that I have dubbed one of my neighbors the flower fairy because she keeps bringing me plants to plant in my perennial garden. And I have so many more bulbs out there because she just brought me all these beautiful bulbs and seeds from her own garden. So ask your neighbors if someone has something that you know is able to propagate or reproduces. Um, I also like to go on the Buy Nothing group for my community on Facebook and ask if anybody has a specific type of plant that I'm looking for. You'll be shocked at how many people, especially for these things that multiply on their own and it's no cost to them usually to share with you, are eager to do it because gardeners are a cool group of people. So once I'm done going through my seed collection and taking notes if I need, for example, uh, just one extra pack of seeds that I just don't have quite enough in my collection or um, ones that I don't have at all, I'll just highlight the ones that I know I need to get a hold of once I've already crossed out the ones that I have seeds for or that I know I can get from someone else. And then flip through your seed catalog for each thing. Look at the different varieties that they have available. Really read through the characteristics of each variety because there's some big differences and it might matter to what you hope to do with your produce. So for example, I really like to try to grow as much as I can to get us through the winter. So that means that for a lot of these things, I want something that stores really well. So I'm gonna be looking in the description for something that says it stores well or is good for storage. Let's say for example, I'm looking at different types of cucumbers and I know that I wanna make some pickles with my cucumbers. I'm gonna be looking for a, type, a variety of cucumber that says it's good for pickling or maybe I just know I'm gonna eat them fresh because nobody in my house likes pickles, then I don't care so much about that. I'm looking for something maybe that has a great flavor and texture for fresh eating. Really think about your family, what you actually like and actually eat, because I think every gardener has done this. Purchased a whole bunch of seeds because we're so excited about growing food of fruits and vegetables that our family doesn't even like and won't eat. And then you're sitting there with piles and piles of turnips and a family that isn't really that interested. Ask me how I know. In the seed catalog, there will also be little symbols and a key at the front of the catalog to show you what they mean. They'll show you which varieties are good for the cold, which varieties might grow well in a container, which ones have organic availability that need full shade or partial shade, and help you make decisions about which variety is the best for you. Make sure you pay attention to those because they're gonna make a big difference in your success or failure based on where you need to put your plants and how they're gonna do in your area. And find the variety that you are most excited about for each thing that you're looking for. And that might be like for example, several different types of tomatoes. I like to grow a cherry tomato, a regular beef steak, some paste tomatoes that work well for things like sauce and salsa, as well as a couple plants of yellow tomatoes and purple tomatoes because those are my husband's and my favorite fresh eating tomatoes. So I have several different kinds of tomato that I'm growing. I have space for that. We really like it and we know that we'll eat it. So it's okay to go for several as long as it fits in your budget and in your space. I also encourage people to grow a couple of things that are just brand new for fun, maybe vegetables you've never even heard of or didn't even know existed. This year, I'm gonna try dragon tongue bush beans, which are a type of green bean that I have never grown before and 
I've heard great things about and it is so, so pretty. And I'm really looking forward to trying it and hopefully it will grow well for me. I'm also gonna try ground cherries this year that I've never grown before or eaten before. And they are a variety of tomatillo that's actually pretty sweet. And they're called ground cherries because when they're ready, they fall off the plant and are on the ground and you harvest from the ground. And I've heard that they are delicious. So this year I'm gonna order the pineapple variety of ground cherries. My last new thing that I'm gonna grow that I've definitely eaten but never grown is edamame. I love edamame to snack on and I have never grown it before. So I am gonna toss that into the mix this year and see what I can do. So as I go through my list, I'm gonna write down my favorite variety and maybe a second because sometimes they're sold out of certain things when I get on the website to order. I also write down the price of the amount of seeds that I would like to grow and I will prioritize which things are most important for me to grow. Usually that means keeping all the things I've grown before and then adding those up and seeing what's left for room for new things. I usually can't buy every single new thing that I want to add in every single year, it's just too expensive. And with gardening, especially if you're establishing a property or a homestead with perennials and things like that, you have time. As exciting as it is and as hard as it is to be patient, it's really, really important that you just take it a bite at a time so you don't get overwhelmed, overspend, or have more than you can actually care for either. So prioritize the things that are most important and just keep going down your list of things you'd like to order in order of their importance to you until you hit your budget amount. Keep note of everything that's left for next year because then next year or next month and maybe you have a little extra money then, uh, you could go back and see if some of those things are available and tack those on, but just order responsibly. Once I have my list that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and go online to Territorial's website and place my order. Uh, they also have a mail-in option, though I've never used it but you don't have to order seeds online. You can take your list that you've just made, head into any store with a garden department and several that don't, and find seeds. Sometimes the dollar store carries seeds, Home Depot, Walmart, Fred Meyer, uh, and any local gardening supply store. So you certainly don't have to place an order to get your seeds. You can just go ahead and buy them. And sometimes they're even cheaper that way. So do whatever works for you. I like to sit here and place my order and look through Territorial's catalog. It just works for me, but you need to do what works for you. Thanks for joining me while I place my seed order this year. I hope you're excited to get your hands in the dirt like I am and grow some food this year. Hang in there. Garden season is just around the corner.